Guayak Pajlazi, hello and welcome to the beautiful Community Credit Union Arena inside the Rath Eastland Community Center here in beautiful Truro, Nova Scotia. My name is Michael Petter. This is Petter Picto Sports. And this afternoon we have for you the penultimate game of the Day of Champions for Hockey Nova Scotia. It's the U15A title game between the South Colchester Elks in white with the black numbers with the red Elks logo on the front taking on the Sackville Flyers in black with the black numbers with white outline with of course the orange trim that you've come to expect from any team with the name Flyers and that is our matchup here for the U15A championship as mentioned this is the penultimate game the eighth of nine contests here at the Colchester or at the uh Rath Eastern Community Center. So far, hardware has been handed out to seven teams who have won provincial titles. Started yesterday with the U11B uh, Coal Harbor Wings defeating the West Hans Warriors to win the U11B championship. That was followed up by the U11A game where the Straight Richmond Pirates were able to get the victory over the Bedford Blues White. The Sackville Flyers Picked up a victory in the U11 AA division as they beat the Crushers for that championship. Then we moved up to the U13 divisions where in the B it was New Waterford over Dartmouth. U13A we saw Cape Breton County fall to the Tassa Ducks. Then this morning the U13 AA Pictou County Crushers were able to get a victory over the Ducks. The Flyers organization became the first organization to win two titles as they beat the Western Valley Spartans in the U15B championship game just a little bit earlier here. And now we're in the U15A final with the Sackville Flyers looking to get a third provincial title for the 2021-22 season from the Day of Champions as they host, or they are the visiting team against the South Colchester Elks. And then after that, we'll still have one more to go. The Coal Harbor Wings will be looking to get their double as they take on the Cumberland County Ramblers in the U18A division for that championship. Should be a very entertaining game as all of our games have been so far here. We've had seven very entertaining hockey games. And two more left to go before we wrap things up here from Truro and I want to again take this opportunity to thank Hockey Nova Scotia for inviting Petter Picto Sports and AOTV <laughs> to uh, be a part of this. Speaking of AOTV, we've also got the Hockey Nova Scotia female day of champions going on down in the Halifax area. So you can watch those games as well. The Metro West Force Hurricanes taking on the Quad County Whitecaps right now in the U13 AAA championship game. And also taking place right now is the U11A championship game between the Metro West Force Warriors and the Riptide White. Taking a look at your starting goaltenders for this game, it's going to be the uh, goalie Caleb, or sorry, Cameron Coker gets the start for the Sackville Flyers and it's going to be Matthew McKenzie getting the start for the South Colchester Elks. Looking at the rest of the starters for the Flyers, William Oldford is up front along with Sean Belanger and the third forward there is Nolan Belfield and we are underway here at the Rath Eastlink Community Center, the, Col the commu Community Credit Union Arena Boy, that's the first time I really messed that one up here so far this weekend. Uh, the other two starters for the Sackville Flyers, I should mention Easton Graves on the back end, and he's partnered with, I believe, that Zachary Chenard. It's a little hard to see the black numbers on the black background. There's a shot, a save, a rebound! And we'll quickly tell you that the Brookfield Elks, Kyle McMillan, out there in the starting five, along with Van Tassel, Harrison and the other two starters were 
Uh, let's see, Vandenberg and McMillan. As the Elks end up icing the puck here with 48 seconds gone. And we get our first stoppage in play with the faceoff deep inside the Brookfields. Er, that's going to happen a couple times today, I'm sure. I'm going to call them the Brookfield Elks because, of course, in the Nova Scotia Junior Hockey League, there is a team called the Brookfield Elks, and the South Colchester Elks play most of their games out of that exact same arena. And Brookfield, of course, sort of the central location within South Colchester. So uh, if I do make that mistake, I do apologize. As there's a big hit delivered by Hurley. As the Elks applying some pressure here into the Sackville Flyers zone. Puck comes up to the line. Jollimore holds it in there. He fires a shot. That goes wide. Comes off the end boards to Scallion. He'll get it out to center. But waiting for it there is Jollimore. Jollimore having trouble getting it past McKelman Sullivan. Now McKelman Sullivan trying to get into the elk zone. He does. And then from his stomach, able to get the puck down below the goal line. Played ahead to Murphy. Murphy not able to do much with that. Now Countway will get to it at the line or get it to the line, excuse me. Now Countway with a second effort, able to bring it out, and here comes Countway through the neutral zone into the flyer end, and then it's knocked away from him and back out, and now Groom will bring the puck ahead, gets the pass forward for Scallion. Here comes Scallion coming in, he fires a shot, that goes just wide. Great opportunity there for Scallion, but not quite able to get it inside the post as he gets the shot past Cameron Coker, but well wide. Now, played back to the line. There's a shot. They score! Charlie McMillan with the shot from the point. I believe it got deflected on its way in. Whether it was deflected by an elk or by a flyer, I'm not sure. But either way, at 2.18 of the first period, the South Colchester Elks strike first. It is 1-0 for the Elks. And not only are they the home team in this game, they really are the home team here as we are within Colchester County as two players and a referee all go down there. McMillan with the puck again. He shot that puck from the point and it looked like it was redirected. The question being, and we'll find out momentarily whether it was redirected by a elk stick or by a flyer stick. And now here's a chance again. And oh, and, or, uh, Bowers just puts it through the back, back of the crease, but not into the net. McMillan does get credit for the goal. Sounded like Sebastian Roy was given the assist there. We'll wait for confirmation of that. It is indeed Waugh who gets that assist. There's a shot. And the deflection by Bowers, but it ends up going into the end glass. Played down the boards. That gets intercepted. Scallion, or sorry, that's 17 Belfield, not 7 Scallion. My apologies. Gets the puck ahead to Belanger. Belanger will play it down into the elk zone where it's picked up. But turned back over to Belanger. He takes a bump from Hurley. And now Murphy working ahead. Down the left wing. Couple of nice moves by Murphy. Murphy gets it in and just wide of the net. Now in front. They jam away at it. And the, out, the Flyers are able to steer it away to the corner. But Murphy picks up again. Sent down below the goal line. Played around the boards to Tyler Murphy. Or no, sorry. It is going to be Melky Murphy who gets to it. Plays it back to the line for Jollimore. Jollimore with the shot. The save made. And covering up as Coker. And he'll hang on for a face-off 409 gone here in the first period. We do like to try and make our broadcasts interactive here on Petter Picto Sports through AOTV. If you want to send us a message through Twitter, the Twitter handle is uh, Petter PC underscore sports. That's at P-E-T-T-E-R, as in my last name, Michael Petter. PC is in Picto County. There's a shot from Wa, and the save made. And then underscore sports. The Facebook handle, facebook.com slash Sports. No underscore in that one. 
And you can send us a message through either of those media. And if there's anything like name pronunciations that I'm getting wrong, by all means, please do correct me. Like, for example, Sebastian, uh, number 91 for the Elks. If it should be the anglicized version, Sebastian Roy, uh, and I'm calling him Sebastian Waugh, by all means, please do let me know that it is the anglicized version. There's a shot and a blocker save made by McKenzie. Puck comes to the line. Graves will send it back down the boards. And we're going to get a penalty here. McClellan for boarding. So Merrick McClellan a little bit too enthusiastic with that body check that he laid on Graves. Takes the first penalty of the game for the South Colchester Elks. And the Sackville Flyers will get the first power play of the afternoon. That one ends up going just wide of the net. Belanger now in the corner. Couldn't get the puck under control. It's flipped out to center. Backing up with it there was uh, McMillan. Now in behind the net. Elks with possession. They don't have numbers on the sleeves, so when I can't see the back, it's hard to know who is who. Meanwhile, the puck cleared down the ice. Held in at the line there by Bowers. He'll send it in deep. And McMillan gets it to Old Field. His pass ahead intended for Belfield, and that's broken up. And now here's Oldford, or that's Old Ford, excuse me. Oldford and Belfield. Puck cleared down the ice, and it's going to head just wide of the net. Back to get it will be Matthew McDonald. McDonald's pass intercepted by. Malky Murphy. Murphy with the shot. And Coker makes the save and hangs on. 54 seconds left in the penalty. 9.04 left to go here in the first period. Quick note on the format for today's game, as it has been for all of the games here at the Day of Champions. Three 15-minute periods will have a just a quick change of ends between the first and second period. And then between the second and third periods, we'll have a full intermission and a flood in the whole nine yards and then we'll have a flood after the game so that the next game will start on a clean sheet of ice and follow the same format three 15 minute periods as it's been for all levels all weekend here at the day of champions puck cleared down the ice gets just past graves and coming out of the net to settle it there is coker back to pick up is i believe that's wayman wayman with it again plays it ahead and it's out to center waiting for it there is McMillan we've got a Jack McMillan on the Flyers and a Charlie McMillan on the Elks so we'll try and keep those guys straight penalty has expired and now it's played down into the Elk zone back to get it is Totten. Totten plays it around the boards it comes to the line held in there by Jack McMillan gets it down the wall to McKelman Sullivan and now the Elks get possession, bring it out. Waugh tries to make a pass. That gets broken up. And now bringing it back in is Langell. Langell makes a couple of nice moves. Langell with the shot, and what a save there by McKenzie as he sticks out the glove. As got a message from Jennifer Turple here, says cheering on Will Oldford and the Flyers from down in Hammonds Plains. Thanks very much, Jennifer, for tuning in and letting us know Flyers win the draw but as the puck was tried to be sent back to McDonald at the line it got past him and McDonald had to go all the way back down into his own zone to get the puck now plays it up for Groom Groom let it go actually to Oliver Oliver gets it out to center then McDonald went to dump it back in but it went off of Groom and all the way back into the elk zone. Having trouble finding it in his feet is Kyle McMillan. Actually, we've got three McMillans because there's Kyle and Charlie on the Elks. And then there's Jack on the Flyers. And then we got a McClellan as well, just to add to the fun. Now Hurley gets the puck below the goal line. So three McMillans and a McClellan. That's not going to create any confusion for me. 
Countway dumps the puck in. It goes off a stanchion, or it goes off the inside of the glass, apparently. And so then comes back out onto the ice surface, and they get a stoppage with 6.44 left to go in the first period. Face-off between, is that Belfield? No, that was Belanger and Van Tassel. Belanger gets on the puck. Belanger coming in, gets the shot away and the save made by McKenzie. Finding it in some feet was Jollimore. He'll play it around to Malky Murphy. And there are two Murphys as well, both on the Elks. Malky Murphy and Tyler Murphy. Puck intercepted there by Belfield. He'll play it back down the wall. Now it comes back up to Belfield again. It gets past him, though, and out to center ice. McMillan plays it across for Oldford. Oldford takes a bump from Jollimore down into the corner. And now played up the wall. And the Elks cross-ice pass gets intercepted and dumped back in deep by Nolan Belfield. With it now is Van Tassel. He plays it ahead. It comes out to center. Gets knocked back in right onto the stick of Van Tassel. He'll bring it forward and loses it again to Graves. But now following up on the play is Countway. Countway cutting in. Countway with a shot. And the save. Rebound comes down. Back to Countway again. Another shot. Another nice save. As Coker able to make a couple of stops there. Now the puck held in at the line by Totten. Goes around the boards. Bump delivered by McClellan on Murphy there. Or McClellan on Romaine rather. Excuse me. Puck played out to center. Charlie McMillan gets it and dumps it back in. Wayman behind his own net. Plays it to the near side wall for White. White takes a bump as the buck puck is played to the line. Totten with the shot. That's knocked down in front of the net. And now back out to center it goes. Gets deflected just past Totten. And all the way down the ice. Totten going in against McKelman Sullivan. McKelman Sullivan able to pick up the puck. Brings it out in front. And that goes off of a skate and then just wide. 4.40 to go here, first period. Elks create the turnover and bring the puck out. Hayden Hurley with it. He's got McMillan with him. Hurley with the shot, and that goes just wide. Puck gets to the line, and then dumped right back in onto Coker. Coker settles it there for his defenseman. And played out to center. Puck knocked loose, comes to White. White will play it to the near side boards. Played off the boards now. Murphy had it for a second but lost it in his feet and the Flyers come the other way. Here's Noah Oliver. Oliver tees it up and that shot goes wide. Puck comes all the way around the boards to the Elks and out to center as Bowers was able to play it ahead. Now Noah Oliver back on it. will send it back to Chenard or to Romaine, excuse me. Romaine gets it back to Oliver again. Oliver tees it up again. Blocker save. Rebound there. Another save. Puck still loose, and now it's cleared up into the high slot. Not out of danger yet, though, are the Elks. Now a, an attempt at a centering pass by Groom. Big hit delivered behind the net there by Ryan McDonald. And the Elks get control of the puck, but the Flyers still pressuring here deep inside the Elks zone with 3.20 left to go. Now the Elks able to clear the pressure as Van Tassel brings the puck up the ice. He takes the shot, and Coker steers that aside. Van Tassel gets back to it in the corner plays it around to the near side for Malky Murphy Murphy ends up losing it there and the Flyers play it back out to center Jollimore gets it to Murphy Murphy plays it ahead race for the puck Hurley gets there just ahead of McDonald Hurley now behind the net gets a bump from McDonald but gets the better of that bump now it's played back to the line for Jollimore Jollimore with a shot and it goes off a couple of sticks ends up on the stick of McMillan and then into the crease of Cameron Coker, and Coker able to cover up and hang on for a face-off with 2.41 left to go here in the first period. Hurley to take this draw against Belanger. Belanger plays it to the towards the line. Jollimore able to keep it in. Now finding the puck was Wayman, but he ends up 
losing control of it now. Oldford able to get it out to center. Oldford pokes it down deep into the South Colchester zone. Behind the net, Oldford gets it out in front. There's a chance! And a big kick save by McKenzie as he's been tested a few times. Waugh trying to split the defense, can't get through. Coming back to get the puck, Belfield, he falls down. Puck played around the board. Chenard takes a couple of bumps, and now here comes Belanger with it. Belanger takes a shot. That goes wide. Puck around the boards. Totten playing it ahead, trying to get it to McMillan. That's knocked down at the line by McKelman Sullivan. Now an attempt at a centering pass. Batted away, but in behind the net again. And the Elks get to it at the far wall. Bowers takes a bump as the pass was coming to him. Now to the line and out. And working ahead here is Charlie McMillan. He's got Bowers with him. McMillan with a shot. And the save made by Cameron Coker. And then after the whistle, Kenny Bowers gets his stick into the equipment of Cameron Coker. And Coker having a word with the referee about that. 81 seconds left to go here in period number one. As the Elks with the 1-0 lead off the goal that came back at the 218 mark from Charlie McMillan, his shot from the point. Through some traffic, may have redirected off of a flyer stick. Now here's Malky Murphy with the puck. Murphy plays it back to the line to McDonald. McDonald, shot, gets through, save, rebound! And a wide open net, but Hayden Hurley with the backhander ends up putting it wide. Glorious chance for Hurley, not able to convert. Now coming the other way, McKelman Sullivan with a shot. And a big save made there by McKenzie. As what a swing that would have been if McKelman Sullivan had been able to score after a missed opportunity by the Elks. Big hit delivered there into the end boards as we're seeing some physicality in this game. Here's McMillan with it now. He'll get the puck ahead. 29 seconds left to go in the period. Here's Scallion with the puck. His shot doesn't get through the crowd. Puck ends up loose, trying to find it. Now the Elks are able to pick up. Kyle McMillan gets it to the line and out. Wah plays it ahead for Van Tassel. Van Tassel trying to get through the crowd. He can't, there's a shot, save, rebound, another save, another shot, he scores! It took three shots to get that one into the net, but with 7.9 seconds left to go, the Elks, and it looks like it's going to be Broden Van Tassel with the goal, gives the Brook or South Colchester Elks, that's twice, the goal to make it two to nothing. Great start to the game for the Elks. There's Jollimore dumping the puck in off the end boards. That's gonna do it for period number one. As South Colchester with a pair of goals, they outshoot the Flyers 16 to 10. They outscore the Flyers two to nothing. And just waiting for the announcement of the goal to make sure that it was indeed Van Tassel who got that last whack at it. Merrick McClellan gets the only assist on that one. It looked like there were two initial shots that both got saved before Van Tassel was able to get the third shot tucked past Cameron Coker. But just the one assist given to Merrick McClellan. So again, Broden Van Tassel from Merrick McClellan at 14.52 gives the Elks a 2-0 lead after the first period of play. And again, for the Elks, this basically really is a home game as they play most of their home games just a few minutes down the road out of Brookfield. 
Elks with possession again. Played back to the line to Countway. Countway will send it down into the corner. In behind the net, trying to get it is Hurley, but he's tied up by Graves. Now Hurley gets it back behind the net. Takes a bump back there from Wayman. Puck squirts free and goes around to Oldford. William Oldford gets the pass across to Belfield. And Belfield able to get it down deep into the Elk zone where it's picked up by Countway. Countway with the pass ahead as the Elks come out to center. With the puck is Kyle McMillan. McMillan throws it towards the front of the net. It comes all the way to the near side. Malky Murphy with it there. He takes a bump. And the Sackville Flyers able to pick up possession. Attempted clear goes off of an Elk body. That was Tyler Murphy, but it ends up right onto the stick of Groom. Groom steers it towards the net. That's sent away by McKenzie. Now they battle for the puck along the far side wall. And it ends up coming out with, I believe that was uh, Belfield who got the shot away. It's a little hard to see the numbers when it's black on black, even with the white piping. Melky Murphy now will dump it down into the Sackville zone and head off for a change. That's why I've always said the most important part of any uniform is contrast. And... I got to I got to admit the piping is good but it'd be a little bit easier if it was wasn't just piping around a black number if it was a actual full white number or orange yeah that would work too as my fantastic cameraman Ashton pointed out use the orange that they've got as the uh n- number or as the uh name bar and as the uh trim use that same orange to get the numbers and they'd pop right off of that jersey here's scallion with the puck in across the line scallion coming and gets the shot away and getting just a piece of that with his glove is matthew mckenzie out to center as trying to hold it on side with chenard but it's cleared out now mcdonald doesn't connect with chenard hurley will get the puck bring it in across the blue line but in a step early was sebastian waugh and so we'll get The stoppage with two and a half minutes exactly gone here in this second period. Van Tassel and Belanger to take the draw. Belanger pushes it forward. It ends up right on the stick of Jollymore, though. And Jollymore able to bring it into the zone. Takes a shot. Save made there by Coker. Now played up the boards. Kyle McMillan pushing it forward for... The Elks, Van Tassel gets it behind the net. Van Tassel takes a bump there from McDonald. Puck comes to the line. Holding it in there is Countway. He tries to push it back low. But Belfield in there to help try and get it out. Bowers couldn't get a shot away. Now it'll be cleared down the ice. Icing is indicated and will be called with 3.08 gone here in period number two. Sackville Flyers have had a very good weekend. They had three teams make it here to the Day of Champions. Two of those teams have already earned their victories. That was the U11 AA's and the U15B's. So trying to be the only team to complete a triple this weekend. No other team has even had two banners so far or at least two provincial championship banners. Every team that gets here has won a conference championship in order to be able to be here at this game, this uh, day of champions. So when I make reference to banners, I'm referring to the provincial championship banner. Groom, not able to get the puck. Now he's able to chase it down and dump it into the South Colchester end. Back to get it is Charlie McMillan. He'll play it ahead. And out come the Elks. Bumped off of the puck there was Hurley now Murphy with it and Murphy will dump it down going back to get it is White Morgan White looking to play it ahead instead plays it across to his defense partner now it's sent out to center picked up there by Vandenberg Vandenberg bringing the puck into the Sackville zone takes it down to the corner 
Now works it back up the wall to the line for McClellan. Merrick McClellan holding it in at the line. Van Tassel in there to help out as well. Then Van Tassel pushes it forward and then takes down his man. And now here come the Flyers. With it is McKelman Sullivan. McKelman Sullivan coming in, gets a shot away. Save made, rebound is loose. Puck is still there. Couple of nice saves by McKenzie and the puck ends up in the corner. And launched down the ice to relieve the pressure. That's going to be an icing call with 4.55 gone here in the second period and a dangerous, dangerous chance for the Flyers. But they're not able to get that one past Matthew McKenzie. They had their chances, just not quite able to convert. Quick update on the out-of-town scoreboard. The Nova Scotia, Hockey Nova Scotia Female Day of Champions taking place down in the, in the RBC Center. Metro West Force Hurricanes lead the Quad County Whitecaps in the U13 AAA Championship game four to nothing. And in the U11A game right now, it's Riptide White over the Metro West Force Warriors by a score of one to nothing. Here it's two nothing for the South Colchester Elks over the Sackville Flyers with four or five and a half minutes gone in the second period. There's a shot steered aside by Coker as the Flyers look to get the puck up to the line and out, but not able to get it out as McMillan holds it in, plays it down the wall for Bowers. Bowers not able to connect with Hurley. And coming out the other way, here is Belfield. He has it taken away from him just inside the blue line. Played out to center, and then Oldfield dumps it back in again as he takes a hit from Bowers to do so. And now the Elks come right back out. Kyle McMillan will dump it in. Now stepping up to the puck is Van Tassel. He has Melky Murphy heading towards the net. Van Tassel gets tied up on the boards. Murphy comes over to help out, but the puck comes back to the line to Charlie McMillan. His shot, or backhander, towards the slot gets... Uh, Tangled up. I thought that was outside. It looked like the puck had cleared the zone to me. And still well inside the zone was Van Tassel. Nevertheless, the puck does end up coming out. So no harm, no foul, I suppose. Now here's Belanger coming the other way. Belanger cutting to the outside. Can't get a pass through as Ryan McDonald ties him up. And the Elks back on it. Looking to clear the zone, but Graves holds it in. Takes a hit up high from Van Tassel. Looks for... A call from the ref isn't going to get one. Vandenberg with the puck now. Below his own goal line. Looking, waiting. Now gets it up to Malky Murphy. Murphy gains the red line. Puts it just past Graves and down the length of the ice. So no icing. And back to get it is White. Morgan White ends up coughing up the puck. Giving it right to Hurley. Hurley coming in. Fans on his shot attempt. And following up on the play, Merrick McClellan not able to get a shot away either. Now taking it back behind the net is Vandenberg. Vandenberg avoiding the pressure. Now has some room to work the puck ahead with 7.20 to go in the second period. Vandenberg goes to dump it down, takes a hit from White as he does. Comes into the near side corner. Merrick McClellan picks it up, throws it to the front of the net. Only black jerseys there. And now Waugh with it behind the net. He takes a bump. Puck played off the boards. Countway holds it in at, at the line. Countway trying to work it forward. Gets the puck to Wall. Wall with the shot. That's saved. Wall back on it. Back to the line for Hurley. Hurley tees it up. Shot and scores! Not sure if Sebastian Wall got a piece of that or if the shot went directly in from Hayden Hurley. Either way, at 8-11 of the second period, the South Colchester Elks now lead it 3-0. That puck did definitely redirect, and now we've got a loose stanchion on the ice. So we're going to have a little bit of a delay here while we get that repaired. Hopefully it's just a quick put it back up and put it back in. But the enthusiastic Elk fans right behind the Flyers' net have locked, have knocked a stanchion loose. So we'll have a 
Brief delay here while they get that fixed. And you can see the group of Elks fans who are sitting right behind the Flyers net right now. It was their home net for the first period. They have been very enthusiastic along that glass. And one of the outcomes is we see that the that stanchion has come loose. Looks like it's a fairly easy repair though. Never thought I'd call play-by-play -play on a repair. <laughs> As we get confirmation that Hurley did. So Waugh gets the assist on that goal. So he did not redirect that puck from in front, but gets the assist. It may have, it must have gone off of a flyer who was there trying to check Waugh. And it looks like we've got that piece set back in and the staff member telling those guys, A, thanks for the help, but B, stop causing that same problem. <laughs> and so we're ready to resume here with 6.49 to go in the second period. And the Elks now leading it three to nothing. Off of the faceoff, McKelman Sullivan gets it across the line. Countway being watched by McKelman Sullivan and Scallion. Scallion gets the puck down below the goal line. Now getting his pressure onto Jollimore. Scallion able to steal it back from Jollimore. Plays it down below the goal line. Jollimore able to get to the puck ahead of Chenard. But the forecheck of the Flyers here causing some pressure. Finally, Kyle McMillan able to bring it out to center. McMillan will get it deep into the flyer zone. Stops the puck there, but ends up losing his balance. Romain had it for a moment. Now it comes out front for Van Tassel. Van Tassel with a shot. And able to make the save is Coker. Another chance, that one Bowers, and he puts that just wide. Totten held the puck in, then got it to McMillan, who sends it behind the net. Flyers pick up there, played around the boards, and out to center. Now here comes a chance for McKelman Sullivan. McKelman Sullivan coming in, shoots and scores! Duncan McKelman Sullivan with the partial breakaway, the blocker side shot, beats Matthew McKenzie, and it's now 3-1 to one with 5.47 still left to go here in period number two. A big goal there for McKelman Sullivan as the Flyers trailed by three needed to get that next one to keep this game within reach and they have certainly done that. Now here comes Belfield with a shot. And we're going to get a penalty. And we're going to get a penalty against the Elks here. It's going to go against Ryan McDonald for head contact. With 5.26 left to go. And it's going to be a four-minute head contact penalty. So a great chance here for the Flyers to try and close the gap a little bit further. And if they can even score on both halves of the power play, tie up this game at three apiece. So Ryder Scallion with the assist on that goal by McKelman Sullivan. And again, the Flyers now going to work on the power play. With the puck at the near wall, played back to the line to Romain. Romain sets it up to Belfield. Belfield with the blast. And Belanger looking for the deflection, but ends up deflecting it over the glass instead of down into the net. And so the faceoff will come outside to neutral ice with 3.28 left to go in the Elks penalty. Again, a double minor to Ryan McDonald 
for head contact. 10.07 gone here in the second period. 3-1 in favor of the Elks, who are currently shorthanded. McMillan able to get it out to center. Romain waiting for it there. Gets the pass across to the far side. Brought back in across the line into the zone. Pass across intended for Sal uh, Scallion. That was deflected away by McMillan. Now McMillan will take the puck behind the net and launch it out down the ice. All the way right to Cameron Coker. Coker settles it there for his defense. Puck comes ahead. Scallion fans on it. And then McMillan, or McClellan rather, will dump it in deep. Played up the far side for McElman Sullivan. Played to the near side. Getting to it first is Juan. He'll send it back in deep where Jack McMillan will pick up for the Flyers. 2.38 to go in the penalty. Four minutes left to go here in the second period. Cross ice pass broken up by Vandenberg and he'll send it down as far as McMillan. Jack McMillan got it ahead. That gets broken up by Countway. Countway coming in. Countway has that puck get a little bit too far from him. And now we're going to get a penalty call against Countway. As... Countway trying to argue that he didn't. They're going to call the slash. Countway trying to argue that his momentum carried him into the goalie and he didn't try to make any contact, but contact was made. So it's going to be a full two minutes of five on three here as there's 217 left in the double minor to Ryan McDonald. And now Countway in the box for the slashing penalty. Belfield with the shot. That's steered aside by McKenzie as the Flyers with a great chance here. But there's a shot and a glove save by Matthew McKenzie. And he'll hang on for a faceoff. 142 left to go in the double or in the uh, penalty to Countway. 158 left in the penalty to McDonald. And the Flyers. Belfield off of the draw, gets the shot away, and McKenzie kicks that one aside. Now in behind the net, Belanger plays it back to his defense. Oldford steps into the shot, gets it, but it goes wide. Now White trying to work it back down the boards. McMillan tying it up there, working against McKelman Sullivan. Also in there is Belanger. Belanger trying to work the puck free away from McMillan. McMillan doing a great job of killing a little bit of time. Now White will get it at the line. White gives to Belfield. Belfield. Loses control of it. And Malky Murphy gets it down the length of the ice. Murphy trying to tie it up deep in the flyer zone with 50 seconds left in the double or in the five on three. And now coming in, here's McKelman Sullivan. That shot gets blocked by Totten. Puck goes in behind the net. Vandenberg clears it as far as the line. Wayman not able to hold it in. And as Oldford picks up in neutral ice, the Flyers have to come back out. Oldfield gets a shot. That gets blocked. It comes right back to Oldfield. Another shot that's blocked. Now trying to get a third shot away, but it's also blocked. As between Taunton and I believe that was Kyle McMillan, or Taunton and Hurley rather, three shot blocks there. Now Belfield. Ends up fanning on the puck. And Hurley will get it out to center. Wayman knocks it down with his glove. And then the next player to touch it was Oliver. So that's going to be a hand pass here with five seconds left in the penalty taken by Countway. 22 seconds left in the penalty to Ryan McDonald. And it looks like this opportunity for the Flyers to climb back to within a goal may end up going by the wayside. Van Tassel wins the draw to McMillan. He'll play it into the Sackville zone. Van Tassel able to get possession of the puck. First penalty is ended. Van Tassel with the shot and the save made by Coker. And he has to hang on for a face-off with 13 seconds left in the penalty to McDonald. And 1.38 left to go here in this second period. Face-off will be to the right of Coker. As the Elks... 
done a have done a great job on this penalty kill or these penalty kills I should say that puck end up ends up in the Zamboni Bay as Countway went to play it off the glass but it goes over the glass and the faceoff should come outside the zone I would think now they're going to talk it over and yes indeed they are going to move the faceoff out to neutral ice as it was not deflected. It went directly out off of Countway's stick. So the faceoff comes out to neutral ice. Just five seconds left in the man advantage. Countway dumps it back in, and that will do it for the power play for the Flyers. We're back to five on five and down to 80 seconds left to go here in this second period. Battle below the Flyer goal. Romaine comes out with the puck, plays it around to the wall for Scallion. He'll flip it ahead. McKelman Sullivan not able to get it. Jollimore pokes it away from him. It comes back to Jollimore, and that piece of stanchion comes out a second time. And so with 103 left to go in the second period, we'll stop here and perhaps, depending on how long it takes to make this repair, it might be wiser to have the teams leave the ice, do the flood, make the repair, and then come back, play the last minute and three seconds of the second period, and then play the third. This may be a quick repair, but, I mean, we had a quick repair once, and it came back out again. And, I mean, it's certainly not unprecedented when you have a situation like this to have... a small part of a period end up played after the flood rather than in ahead of it well they got it set back in so hopefully that'll work at least for 63 more seconds of playing time and then they can get a more solid fix the rest of the way fingers crossed got to give the Rath Eastlink Community Center staff a lot of credit here they have done a fantastic job keeping this building in great shape with a lot of teams coming through here and a lot of games being played here this weekend the ice is in great shape the building all around has been wonderful the staff has been so friendly with us it's been great there's a shot taken by Countway and another nice save made by Coker right off the face puck played out to center 30 seconds left to go dumped back in now Romain will get to it. 24 seconds left in the period. Flyers with a chance to make a rush and maybe get one or two more shots away, but the puck is turned over. Elks will get it back out to center. It gets past McDonald. McMillan slams it off of the boards, and it ends up going to McMillan. That's Jack McMillan to Charlie McMillan. Of course, they're both number 12s too, so, I mean, that just... And that will do it for the second period. Shots on goal in period number two. Nine by the Elks and ten by the Flyers. So the total after two periods, the South Colchester Elks outshoot the Sackville Flyers 25 to 20. And we'll get a break while we have our flood here in the second intermission. And while we have that break, I strongly recommend you head down to the, uh, back out to the AOTV sports homepage check out the action going on in the uh hockey nova scotia female day of champions and then come on back for the third period which we will be back for in just a few minutes you are watching hockey nova scotia's day of champions south colchester elks three sackville flyers one from the community credit union arena inside the rathy sink community center
Welcome back, folks, as we get ready for the start of the third period here between the Sackville Flyers and the South Colchester Elks. The Hockey Nova Scotia Day of Champions U15A championship game. Sackville Flyers looking to get their third provincial title of the 2022 Day of Champions weekend after winning in the U11 AA category and winning in the U15B category earlier this weekend. As we get ready for this third period, the Elks carry a 3-1 lead into this third period. One more game left to go after this one, scheduled for a 3 o'clock puck drop, and that will be the Cumberland County Ramblers and the Coal Harbor Wings playing for the U18A title. South Colchester Elks back out onto the ice here. One of the key turning points of this game could very well be the stretch of time between 342 and 142 remaining in the third or in the second period when the Elks killed off a full two-minute five-on-three short-handed situation and were able to come away without giving up a goal. They certainly gave up some very good chances but did not let one get past Matthew McKenzie. And now as we await the Sackville Flyers, here they come. Flyers back out onto the ice as well. Couple players for the Flyers who've really impressed, impressed me. One has to be obviously Cameron Coker in net. He's had a couple of really nice saves another one who I've really been impressed with obviously Duncan McKelman Sullivan who has the lone goal for the Flyers Ryder Scallion has the assist he also has played really well Nolan Belfield has had a very good game for the Flyers a couple of the Elks who've really stood out to me obviously Matthew McKenzie in goal Broden Van Tassel with a goal Hayden Hurley with a goal as well. Charlie McMillan and Kyle McMillan both have played very well here so far today. As the third period gets underway, McDonald goes to dump the puck down into the flyer zone. It comes right to the side of the net. And Cameron Coker covers up and hangs on for a faceoff. Just eight seconds gone here in this third period. Bit of a statement of the obvious. The next goal in this game could be huge as if the Elks are able to get one and make it a three-goal lead, that would make the hill for the Flyers to climb. I wouldn't say insurmountable, but it would make it certainly challenging, a lot more challenging. And if the Flyers get the first one of this period early enough and have a lot of time left with uh, just a one-goal deficit, then we're looking at a situation where anything can happen. Meanwhile, here comes Belanger, his shot. That's partially blocked, and or that's blocked enough by Vandenberg to send it towards the corner. Vandenberg then gives to McMillan, takes it right back again from McMillan. He'll lead the rush up the ice now as the rest of his teammates are changing. Following up on the play, Tyler Murphy fires it around the boards. Picked up by Malky Murphy at the far wall. He'll send it back around to the near side, Tyler Murphy again. But Murphy not able to get that puck under control. Comes all the way to the line. Jollimore with the shot from the point. That steered away by Coker. Now Hurley picks up the puck. He gets bumped off by Belanger. Hurley gets it back, plays it towards the line. And Countway will send it in deep again. Comes around to the near side corner. First one onto it there is Tyler Murphy. He gets taken into the boards though. Now Belanger will play it ahead for Oldford. And Oldford able to get it out to center. Knocked down by Jollimore. Jollimore able to bring it back in across the blue line. Sends it towards the net. Coker covers up and hangs on for a faceoff. And then a little bit of a little bit of a jostle after the whistle between Nolan Belfield 
and Hayden Hurley. Nothing too serious. Van Tassel wins the draw over to Waugh. Waugh down into the corner, trying to get it back to Van Tassel, but that was broken up. Now Waugh puts it towards the net, and they score! Sometimes you need a little bit of puck luck on your side, and for the South Colchester Elks, they get it there as they put it towards the net. It goes off of the inside of the foot of Cameron Coker and just slides across the goal line. And that'll be a third point of the game for Sebastian Waugh as he was the player who sent it into the crease. So it should be Waugh's goal, I do believe. Now we're going to get an offside call against the Flyers here. So they make it 4-1 to one with 146 gone in the third period. And we talked about the fact that that goal, whichever way it went, was going to be crucial. And it now does give the Elks a three-goal advantage. As we get confirmation, it is... It is Waugh's goal, and it goes unassisted. His third point of the afternoon. And now there is Waugh with the puck. He has it knocked away from him by Groom. Groom throws it towards the front of the net. Charlie McMillan takes it away from danger down towards the corner. Now McMillan gets it back again. That pass onto the wrong side of Waugh. Gets out to center. Attempted dump back in by White. Gets in just across the line, but the Elks able to bring it quickly back out again. Waugh gets it across there for McClellan. McClellan with the shot. That goes off of the stick of, I believe that is Wayman. Now it comes out in front. Chance for Hurley. Hurley throws it to the front of the net, but the Flyers able to clear it away from danger and out to center it goes. McClellan hustling back. Gets the puck to Vandenberg. Vandenberg will take it back behind his own net. And now start to move his way ahead. Gets the pass across for McClellan, but it got out of his reach, and McMillan sends it the back into the elk zone. That was Jack McMillan. Now carrying the puck ahead is Vandenberg. Has it knocked off his stick that time by Belanger. Getting it back in deep, and Ryan McDonald will go back and get it. Play it around the boards to the near side for Kyle McMillan. McMillan works it ahead, gives to Hurley. Hurley has it knocked off his stick by Wayman. Hurley gets it back, though, then loses it. That time, Romain able to get a piece of the puck. McDonald will dump it in. Wayman goes back behind his own net to get it, but getting there first ahead of him is Bowers. Bowers plays it around the boards, comes to Countway at the line. As we approach 345, gone here in the third period. Puck comes around the boards. Oldford gets it ahead to Belanger. Belanger turns, tries to make a pass, but too many white jerseys in the way, including Jollimore. Jollimore gets it to Bowers, who brings it out. Here comes Bowers. He gets his stick lifted and his arm lifted as getting the hook in was, I believe it's going to be McKelman Sullivan who's going to take the penalty. It is indeed. And the first time this game that the Sackville Flyers go shorthanded as McKelman Sullivan takes the hooking penalty with 4.07 gone here in the third period. So the Flyers, 0 for 4 with the man advantage, now have to kill a penalty for the first time. Getting waved out of the faceoff circle is Chenard. Van Tassel wins the draw, but the Flyers end up with possession. Now here's Malky Murphy playing it around to the near side wall. Tyler Murphy sends it back behind the net. Van Tassel going back there after it, working against Matthew McDonald. Now it comes to Malky Murphy. He'll play it into the near side corner. Tyler Murphy there to pick up. Murphy plays it back to Totten. Totten with the shot. That goes off of the uh, skates of McMillan. Now Tyler Murphy with it behind the net. He gets tied up by Matthew McDonald. Van Tassel in there to help out as well. It comes free to Scallion and he'll be able to launch it down the length of the ice. It goes just wide of the net. And back to get it is Totten. 
Taunton loses control of it. Here's a chance for Scallion and a big kick save made by McKenzie. As Scallion creates the turnover, now we're going to get a penalty. They're going to call interference against Jesse Taunton. So we'll play nearly a full minute of four on four, and then the Flyers will get their fifth power play of the afternoon as Jesse Taunton takes an interference penalty with 5-12 gone. Now, McDonald will come in to take the draw against Belanger. Belanger wins it to Belfield, but Belfield couldn't turn and fire, and Hurley will come the other way. Here's Hurley. He'll stop in the face-off circle, play it back to McDonald. McDonald tries to give it back to Hurley, but that bounces over his stick, and that will allow White to get it up the boards. Not out of the zone, though. Belanger tries to get it past McClellan. That's not going to work. Now Belanger will get the puck over. And out with it comes Belfield. Belfield shoots. And the save made by McKenzie. Puck steered over to the wall. 21 seconds left in the four on four. And then the Flyers will go back to the man advantage. Here's McDonald with the puck. McDonald working ahead. Dumps it in deep and then takes a hit from Belfield, but actually gets the better of that hit as Belfield's the one who goes down. McDonald back on the puck. Chenard coming in to chase him. And Belfield knocks it or launches it down the ice. The penalty to the Flyers had expired, so it was a shorthanded situation when he did that, so no icing. Here's Jollimore with the puck now, and he'll send it the length of the ice as well. 45 seconds left now in the Sackville Flyer power play. Eight and a half left to go in the third period. The Flyers trailing the South Colchester Elks by three. Here comes McKelman Sullivan cutting to the outside. Takes the shot. And it was a bit of a bit of a uh, off-speed pitch there as it looked like there was going to be a lot more velocity behind that shot than there was. Now away from the puck, we have McKelman Sullivan going down. I didn't see what exactly happened to him, but he's back to his feet, so that's a good sign. And as he was coming back to the bench, Duncan McKelman Sullivan, you can hear him saying, what a joke. So obviously he thought there should have been a penalty called on that. And he's going to get... Or no, he's thought he was heading across towards the penalty box for that commentary. Nine seconds left in the penalty to Totten. Whatever contact was made that caused McKelman Sullivan to hold his head like that, it did come well away from the puck. And so I didn't see the exact nature of the contact. There was a referee right there who saw it and obviously decided it was not worth calling a penalty on. Here with it now is Oliver. Oliver takes the shot. That goes off of the leg of Vandenberg. Vandenberg able to pick up the puck after it comes off the end boards. Cleared to the line, not out. Nice play there by Oliver to hold it on side. And now Tyler Murphy, he's not able to clear either. Vandenberg will take it, try to get away from Groom. Goes back behind the net, changes direction to get it over to Malky Murphy. Murphy to Van Tassel, up to Tyler Murphy. And they get it the rest of the way down the ice. Deep into the flyer zone here, under seven minutes left to go, third period. White battling with Van Tassel, also in there is Oliver. Coming in to help out is McClellan. McClellan trying to make a centering pass for Waugh. That doesn't connect. And it's now back down into the elk zone. Clearing attempt, knocked down. Shot blocked, though, by Van Vandenberg. And Vandenberg will carry the puck ahead after blocking that shot. And here comes Vandenberg. He's got Waugh with him. Vandenberg, what a move! And then he gets hooked up. No call. Play continues on. 
What a move there by Daniel Vandenberg with the little Savardian spinorama. Of course, named for Serge Savard of the Montreal Canadiens, not for Denny Savard of the Chicago Blackhawks and Montreal Canadiens, as some, some thought. No, it was older. It's older than Denny Savard. It's all the way back to Serge. It played out to center. Countway dumps it back in. Now it's brought back out again. Countway getting it ahead to Hurley. Here comes Hurley coming in. Hurley with the shot. Save made by Coker. Into the corner. Hurley back on it again. Plays it back to the line for Jollymore. Jollymore with the shot. And Coker with the glove save. And he'll hang on to it there with 536 left to go here in the third period. Elks looking to keep the Sackville Flyers from having a perfect weekend. As the Flyers, a little bit of confusion as to who's supposed to be on the ice and who was coming off. Now they got it straightened away. White ends up with the puck off of the faceoff. Plays it around to the far side, just a little bit out of the reach of Romaine. Tied up in the corner there by Bowers. Five, six players all in there scrambling for the puck. Battle continues now well away from the puck. We got a couple of shoves delivered there by McKelman Sullivan. Puck loose at the side of the net. White will play it up the boards to Groom. Groom bats at it, but it's knocked down by Jollimore. His shot hits Belanger. As McKelman Sullivan out there throw. Throwing a hit, and that's going to be a penalty on McKelman Sullivan as it was square into the numbers on Countway, and it was away from the puck, far enough away from the puck, that it will be an interference penalty against the Sackville Flyer, Duncan McKelman Sullivan. And you get the feeling that that all stemmed from the hit that he took or the contact that was made with him. Again, I didn't see it, so I can't really describe. Totten fans on a shot attempt there as the Elks are on their second power play of the afternoon. They are 0 for 1. Puck comes back to the line to Totten. Totten with the shot. That's blocked. Getting to it is Hurley. Hurley with the backhander. That's also blocked. Now Hurley gets it back again, plays it down into the corner for Tyler Murphy. Murphy, a couple of little head fakes. Now gets a... Weak shot away as his stick was tied up. Gets the puck over to Malky Murphy. Murphy into the corner. Back to the line for Totten. Totten with the shot. Bounces in. Coker having trouble finding it. It's still loose. And now it's cleared over to the wall. White plays it up the boards but ends up losing it to Malky Murphy again. There's a shot. Save. Rebound. Scores! A power play goal for Tyler Murphy as he's able to get the rebound and just poke it underneath Cameron Coker. Tyler Murphy with the goal. Malky Murphy should get an assist, as should, I believe, Jesse Totten. We'll wait and see on that one whether they give both assists on that one or not. We'll wait for that. The official word on that, it'll certainly be at least one assist to Malky Murphy for the initial shot. And then the rebound goal scored by Tyler Murphy, making it now a 5-1 game. As the South Colchester Elks are within 3 minutes and 40 seconds of spoiling the perfect weekend for the Sackville Flyers. Sounds like just Malky Murphy with an assist there. It is indeed just Murphy from Murphy at 10.58. Now another chance, wrap around, save made. As Coker standing tall still for his team has made 36 saves this afternoon. And now here's Waugh, ends up losing his footing all on his own. Nobody near him. But the pass intercepted. McMillan with the shot. Save, rebound. Waugh with the shot. And Coker gets enough of that one 
to have it go wide as well. Now Groom heading up the ice. Here's Groom. He's got someone with him, but couldn't get the puck under control enough to get a pass. Now here's Bowers playing it around the wall, trying to clear the zone, but it ends up on the stick of Groom. He can't get a shot away. Oliver following up, ends up running into McDonald, and now out comes the puck with McMillan. McMillan with the blast, and that's redirected into the end glass by the blocker of Cameron Coker. 2.20 left to go. Four-goal lead for the Brook, or the South Colchester Elks. That's three if anybody's uh, playing the game. Every time I refer to the team by the wrong name, there you go. <laughs> Brand new way to enjoy hockey. There's a hit delivered, and they're going to call that elbowing, I do believe. No, they're going to call it interference as Bowers ran into Belanger. And I think the argument that Bowers is going to try and make here is he was skating in a straight line towards the puck. And the collision was accidental and incidental. But he's not going to win that argument. And so the Brookfield Elks will be... Or the, there you go again. There's number four. South Colchester Elks will be shorthanded. <laughs> for the final minute and 57 seconds of this game unless the Sackville Flyers can get a power play goal. And if they do get one real quickly here, then who knows, it would become just a three-goal game. Here's Countway with the puck now coming in, takes a shorthanded shot. That goes off the glove of Coker and just a little bit high. 137 left to go here in the third period. Here's Hurley with the puck now. Hurley just trying to kill off a bit of time as he gets tied up with Belanger. Now played out to center, Oldford. That pass broken up there by Countway. Now bringing the puck into the zone, Belanger. He gets taken down. We're going to get another penalty. And so the Elks will be down five on three here for the last minute and 15 seconds of this contest. As a bit of confusion as to which player it is who got the penalty, it is indeed Countway. So with 1.15 to go, a five on three, second five on three that the Flyers have had this afternoon. They had a full two minutes of five on three earlier, weren't able to take advantage of that. Now they've got a minute and 15 seconds of five on three here in the closing moments of this hockey game. Puck cleared down the length of the ice, gets through McMillan. He's got to go back and pick up. Jack McMillan behind his own net, plays it ahead. That pass just out of the reach of Langell. Now McMillan again with it. He's got Romain on the near side, makes the pass over to Romain. Romain tried to set it to Chenard, but Chenard wasn't quite ready for that one. Now pass ahead for McKelman Sullivan. McKelman Sullivan's shot goes high. 33 seconds left to go in the third period. Here's Romain with the puck. He tees it up, gets the shot through. It redirected a couple of times, but ended up going just wide. Now down the wall and into the corner. 20 seconds left, played out front. Melky. Murphy able to get it out to center. Romaine will back it up with 14 seconds left as the South Colchester Elks can count down the last eight seconds. And they will be the U15A Nova Scotia champions. The Elks with the victory. Five one the final score. Shots on goal in that third period. 19 to six for the Elks. The three period total 44 to 26 for the Elks. And the victory five one here over the Sackville Flyers. The Flyers end up winning two of the three games that they had teams in here at the Day of Champions. And for the U15A Flyers, obviously some disappointment right now. But they'll be able to look back on this and think with pride on being provincial silver medalists. That's a great accomplishment. 
And again for the South Colchester Elks, a great victory, a fantastic provincial championship earned by the Elks. Now we'll send things downstairs for the post-game presentations. So McKelman, Sullivan, and McKenzie are your players of the game for today.
So there you have it, the South Colchester Elks with the 5-1 win over the Sackville Flyers claim the 2022 Hockey Nova Scotia U15A title. That's going to wrap it up for this one, but we still have one more game left coming up in about half an hour or a little more than that. The Coal Harbor Wings will take on the Cumberland County Ramblers. Until then, on behalf of my awesome cameraman, Astrid Riki, this is Michael Petter saying, may your skates always be sharp, may your shots always hit the top shelf. Final score one last time, the Elks are champions with a 5-1 win over the Flyers. Thanks so much for watching. We'll be back with you very shortly. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday.